Hello friends and greetings from Iceland again. I just returned from Bulgun where I have made this footage from the drone and we are flying towards the greenhouse and the new lava which spilled over inside the walls of Grindavik inside the protective berms which were made to save the town from the lava but they were made kind of too far north of the town then part of the fissure, eruptive fissure, happened to be inside the walls. And during the last eruption, uh, we had the fissure open it, that opened it up right in the middle of the wall, through the wall and into the town. Luckily, it didn't last long. And Grindavik town had been spared this time. It's still very uncertain what will happen next. But there are signs of the land rise and the new magma accumulation. Now yesterday it became clear that the deformation data clearly show that land rise continues beneath Swartzenge. Land rise is now occurring at a faster rate than after the last eruption. This could be explained by the large volume of magma released from the system in this last event. However, it is too early to predict the future trend in the magma accumulation rates. Experience from previous events shows that magma accumulation rates generally decrease as the magma accumulation period between eruptions progresses. We need to wait at least a week, possibly several weeks, to determine whether and how much the magma accumulation rate will change. Based on available data, it is clear that the inflow of magma under Sorsengi is continuing and therefore the sequence of events at the Sunukur crater is not over. While magma accumulation continues under Sorsengi, there is a possibility of repeated magma flows in even volcanic eruptions. The Islamic Met Office continues to monitor the area and assess possible scenarios based on the latest data. According to the model calculations, about 30 million cubic meters of magma flowed from the magma chamber under Swartzengi and into the magma tunnel on April 1st. This makes the magma flow the largest since November 10, 2023. Micro seismic activity continues to be measured in the northern part of the magma tunnel that formed on April 1st. So the number of earthquakes decreased significantly and today we had only three earthquakes about a magnitude two now we are approaching the very fissure line and the point where a lava broke through the wall you will see it better soon it was very foggy that day when i was there and it's often times we have fog around Grindavik and the lava fills maybe due to the heat which comes from the lava. Here you see how the eruptive fissure broke through the defensive berm right through. Still steaming. It's more steaming to the south, uh, closer to Grindavik. I will fly there too and you will see also the ground fractures the eruptive fissure lines in the ground due to the tectonic divergence which runs through this area tectonic fault lines run right through Grindavik and along the Sunnukargir fissure line it's the very reason behind the activity this is the area to the north of the wall we will also fly along the wall and scan the lava to the west. Today we also saw an article, an interview with Icelandic, another Icelandic volcanologist, Haraldur Sigurdsson from the US, who wonders uh, what will happen in the third period of activity in the Sunnukar year crater system. He says that the latest events have primarily been a major tectonic step, which is probably related to the major plate movement and the subsequent sliding of Reykjanes Peninsula, will it increase magma flow from the mantle? As soon as the last eruption ended, land began to rise above the magma vents, as in previous magma flows, 
and perhaps faster than before. Perhaps a landslide and seismic activity on April 1st has made it easier for magma to rise from the mantle and into the magma chamber. Beneath Swartzenki says Harald. We are most aware of the eruptions in lava flows, but in reality that is not the main issue. We need to delve much deeper into the crust and into the mantle below to understand these events. The professor says that uh, geophysics has shown us that the magma development at the depths of about 4 kilometers under Schwarzenegger is the crux of the matter. And in order to better understand what is happening in the lower part of the Earth's crust and in the mantle under Reckoners, there is need to use seismic measurements made from the side of a ship around Reckoners. He says specially equipped to research vessels and then emit very powerful waves that flow through the Earth's crust and mantle beneath Reckoners, illuminating the area down to a greater depths in the mantle. So we don't really know what is happening deep under to give a good explanation behind the possible future scenarios or events what might take place. Uh, Thorvaldur Thordarsson, another Icelandic uh, volcanologist, attributed the most recent seismic activity not to the magma movement but to the tectonic activity. He says that the recent seismic activity on Iceland's Reykjanes Peninsula, particularly near Reykjanes Tau Cape in the very end and northeast of Sunukur Crater, may signal a shift in volcanic activity following the end of the latest eruption near Grindavik. He believes the current tremors are more likely caused by tectonic tension than by magma movement. Something is changed in there. In an interview with the Morning newspaper, Thorvaldur Thordarsson stated that the ongoing seismic activity might signal a change in the underlying geological processes on the Reykjanes Peninsula. I don't know exactly what this means, but my sense is that something is changing there, and we could therefore expect some unexpected events in the near future because of it. This is a different pattern we are seeing in different kinds of events. Uh, Thorvaldo says the events may signal that the volcanic activity is winding down at Sunuka Giger crater of the lava field formed during the recent eruption and that uh, the activity may be shifting to a new area. It wouldn't surprise me if what we are seeing now marks the end of the events at Sunuku, Sunuka Hroin lava field in terms of volcanic activity and that the activity is moving perhaps out towards Reykjanes or east to Krisovik. Despite the uptick in seismic activity northeast of Sunukur crater, Thorvaldur considers it's unlikely that this is due to the movement of magma dike, the vertical intrusion of magma in the earth crust. Indeed, he attributes the earthquakes to tectonic forces. He believes it is more likely the the result of a tension released along the tectonic plate boundaries which contributes to earthquakes. This is quite interesting statement. The possibility of a prolonged shield eruption in this area shouldn't be excluded on my opinion as well as we don't know how the shield volcanoes develop and this activity might go on here for years, even decades. Back um, in September, same volcanologist um, Thorvald or Thordeson went speculating about the possibility of shield eruption here at Sunukur, told that the general feeling among scientists is that the lava shields are formed in one long eruption. However, it is not completely known what the lead up to such eruptions is. They could start as many small eruptions which then get bigger and bigger until we have such a large and powerful eruption that we create a lava lake in the main crater. It gets big enough to take in significant amount and then splits lava from itself and spreads lava all around it. But the flow from below it just constant into this lava lake so the eruption can last for 
much more than a month. Then he says, pointing out that something like that happened in Hawaii in 1983, that eruption lasted for 35 years. It should be noted that slightly to the east of Sunuka Gigar crater, towards Keller, we have uh, the largest shield um, lava from some 7,000 years ago called Thrine's shoulder, the shield of Thrine, when lava flooded 250 square kilometers, and that was a prolonged shield eruption. However, we have no clue, we don't know how it all developed or what events preceded um, the formation of that enormous lava field on which we have the town of Wogar built on when lava reached even the ocean going four kilometers into the sea. Well, the time will show, but the fact is that the inflow of magma into Schwarzenegger chamber had been decreasing over time and it might take a very long time before we see the next eruption, couple of months at least. Enjoy the rest of the footage. God bless you. Have a nice day. Be well.